you could watch. Now, answer the question. To be honest with you, I believe that this is a fantastic idea simply because this is very distracting for most students. For example, if you allow children or students in high school to use their cell phones in class, they're just going to access social media instead of using tools that are actually very good for them in the classroom. This is just going to ultimately create a very big distraction and it will take away from the essence of the lesson and become even more difficult for teachers to give their lesson. So I believe that implementing this in schools would give teachers an ample amount of positivity and make it very easy for them to teach lessons without being distracted. For question two, okay. you will read some information in a campus publication. Oh, this then you will hard. listen to a conversation about it. Using information from the reading and the conversation, you will answer a question. You have 30 seconds to prepare and 60 seconds to record your response. Okay, now watch this. This is the speaking question two. 50 seconds of reading. Watch State me. University has announced longer dining hall hours. Read an article about the announcement in the campus newspaper. You have 45 seconds to read the article. Begin reading now. Done. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so here we go. Oh, this is going to be tough. Now, listen to two students discussing the announcement. Hey, did you see this? They're extending the main dining hall hours. Yeah, and I think it's about time. Was the schedule a problem for you before? Well, since I'm a teaching assistant, I have to stay after class a few days during the week. Usually on those days, I have to eat off campus because everything is closed. Oh, wow. I had no idea that you had to eat off campus some evenings. Yeah, since I can't use my meal plan those days, I end up spending a lot more and eating way too much fast food. If the dining hall is open, I can use my plan and have more healthy meals before I head home. Yeah, that makes sense. I may apply to work a few evenings. I could use the extra cash. You should. I would come visit you at work. Plus, the university pays pretty well. I think it's great that they are opening up the positions to students. It's great that they are thinking about our non-course related lives. It's definitely a welcome change. More dining options should have been in the works a long time ago. Well, I'm glad they finally got around to it. Yeah, me too. This is definitely a win-win policy. The man expresses his opinion hey. about the dining hall's new operating hours. Here we go. State his opinion and explain the reasons he gives for holding it. Here prepare your response. Here we go. I got, now you get 30 seconds to prepare. Now remember, I wrote a lot because I have 10 fingers. It's very easy for me. Okay, so I wrote down a lot of things, but what it requires is an introduction from the reading announcement that I read, and then the transition about the man or woman agrees or disagrees, and then the notes and me putting it all together. You're going to hear me break this down right here, right now, goddammit. <sighs> okay, here we go. Uh, 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 uh. Now, answer the question. An announcement was made by the university stating that they're going to extend the dining hall's hours and have it stay open until late so that students could actually take advantage of their meal plans and students would be able to also apply for jobs on campus. The man agrees for several reasons, including that he thinks it's a good idea because he's actually a teaching assistant and oftentimes he has to stay after class meaning that he's going to have to and always does eat off campus and everything is closed. So since he can't use his meal plan on campus, he ends up spending more and he eats way too much 
fast food. So this is going to be a huge benefit for him, as well as for students, because the university actually pays well. So it's fantastic that they're going to be open in positions for students, making it a welcoming change. And he also stated that they should have applied this a long time ago. Ooh, that was exciting. For question three, you will read a passage All from right. a textbook. Then you will listen to part of a lecture about what you have read. Using information from both the passage and the lecture, you will answer a question. You have 30 seconds to prepare and 60 seconds to record your response. Okay, so I got to read. Listen, take notes. 30 seconds to prepare. 60 seconds speak. Okay. So, here we go. Now, read a passage about exaptation from a biology textbook. You have 45 seconds to read the passage. Begin reading now. Oh, God, here we go. I fucking hate that word. Exaptation. What the hell does that even mean? Okay, it's a term used by evolutionary biologists to describe a process whereby a trait that had evolved to serve a specific person, uh, I'm sorry, purpose, is co-opted to serve another distinct function. Okay, the readings about exaptation, which is a specific change that was originally used for something changing over time. I have no idea. Actually, that is pretty bullshit, but remember, the AI software is not grading me on my content. It's grading me on how I say my bullshit, so I do not give a fuck. Let's go. Now. Listen to part of a lecture in a biology class. Let's start with an example I'm sure everyone can relate to, our hands. The human hand is a pretty amazing structure, replete with an opposable thumb that allows us to undertake a dizzying variety of manual tasks, from cross-stitching to piloting airplanes. But did the hand, in its current form, originally evolve so that we could type at computers and stack dishes? Of course not. These abilities are only possible due to changes that the primate hand underwent when our ancestors lived mostly in trees. As it turns out, a hand with a strong grip and flexible digits was not only vital for swinging from the underside of branches, it was also useful for plucking the fruit that formed the majority of our diet back then. Once we decided that we had better ways of spending our time than hanging about in trees all day, these wonderful climbing appendages were readily co-opted for a range of other tasks, such as making tools and swinging clubs at hungry saber-toothed tigers. You may recall from the reading that it is not always obvious physical traits like hands that can switch from serving one function to another. Behavioral traits can also be co-opted. Take wolves, for example. A wolf pack always has a dominant leader, right? Well, a subdominant member of the pack will often lick the mouth of the leader as a sign of submissiveness, while young pups will lick the mouth of an adult to encourage them to regurgitate food. What does this remind you of? That's right. This behavior has carried down to the domesticated dog, only now it functions as a sign of affection helping strengthen the bond between humans and their four-legged best friends. Explain exaptation with the help of examples given by the professor. Prepare your response. I love the Morgan Freeman, prepare your response. <laughs> okay, all right. This is a little bit trickier. You're probably saying, oh my God, Arsenio, that was a lecture. That was not two people. This was a little crazy. What am I supposed to write down? You wrote down a lot. How do we go about doing this? Well, hey, I'm, you're only going to be able to write down half, if that. You're probably going to be able to write down only 30% of what I wrote down. So it's about adaptation. Let's do it. Now, answer the question. The reading is about exaptation, which is a specific change that was originally used for something changing over time. The professor gives an example of our hands, which is an amazing structure, and it was meant to do a variety of tasks, such as piloting. These abilities are possible only because our ancestors, the primates who lived in trees. Having a hand with strong grip was not only vital for swinging and plucking fruit, but it was also very important for other things, such as making tools and swinging clubs. 
it wasn't just hands that changed over time, but it was also behavioral traits. Wolves in a wolf pack actually have a dominant leader, but there's also a subdominant, which would lick the mouth of the leader, claiming that it is submissive to them. Young puppies would lick the mouths of the elder to, for them to throw up food. This was carried down to the dog as a sign of affection. Ugh! You see that? It is a little bit more difficult. <laughs> for question oh, four, you will listen order. to part oh, of an I academic lecture. <laughs> <laughs> then you will summarize information from that lecture. Oh my You have God. 20 seconds to prepare hey, and 60 seconds to record your response. Isabella, I had no fucking clue what I was talking about. That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> I was like, what am I talking about? I just kept going and going. You know why? Because you're graded on how you say it, not what you say. Okay? You're graded on how you say it, not what you say. Okay? So, with that being said, here is the last speaking question before you cry. Okay, don't cry now. You could cry after. All right. Yeah, I so want to cry. <laughs> the, first, the first question is the easier. It the, is. The yes. One. That's why I wanted to do the first, uh, what is it? The first question first, because I knew that it was going to be much easier for you to handle. Speaking question two, there are two people. Conversation going back and forth. Okay. Then speaking it's question three. Cool, yeah. It's some crazy tricky shit that you are just going to have to funnel together all your crazy shit. And then speaking of question four, it's just about a lecturer talking about two different adaptations or to this or to that. And it's up to you to do the same thing. Perfect your bullshit. Okay. Perfect your bullshit. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. And this is only a lecture. You do not have a reading in your speaking. So it's always. The lecture is about the two something. Watch me and let's see how this goes. Tres dos uno. Now, listen hey. to part of a lecture in an anthropology class. Bipedality, that is walking upright, is such a basic aspect of our everyday lives that we don't really think about it, right? But how exactly human bipedality came about is a question that has perplexed scientists for decades. Of the many different theories that have been proposed, two are worth noting. First, the savanna hypothesis. So we know that our primate ancestors made their homes in the trees of sub-Saharan Africa. However, about five million years ago, the climate began to change, turning what was once a seemingly endless jungle into these, well, clusters of trees surrounded by expanding grasslands. Now, our ancestors would have had to cross these open spaces in search of food and other resources, exposing themselves to danger. And this is where bipedality comes in. Not only would standing upright have allowed our ancestors to spot predators more easily and at a greater distance, it would have also exposed less of the body's surface to the ravages of the African sun, a double bonus. However, other scientists believe our ancestors were already bipedal, that is, standing upright before leaving the jungle. They argue in favor of the male provisioning hypothesis instead. This hypothesis is based on common sense. You can carry much more food with two arms than one. The idea goes like this. The more food a male primate could carry, the more useful he would be to a potential mate. More food also equals greater survivorship of their offspring, and hence an increase in their reproductive rate, evolution's crucial requirement. And the further afield he had to roam to acquire these resources, the more an efficient upright posture would be selected for. Using the points Holy and examples shit, from the lecture, man. explain oh, two theories gracious. about how human bipedality evolved. Hey. <laughs> Prepare your response. God, hard yeah, that and you only get 20 right. seconds to prepare. Obviously, I wrote everything down. And then I think I, I think a storm just hit. I just heard roaring outside. I thought it was a fucking elephant. Mm -hmm. And so I heard roaring elephants. And when you take the test at the testing center, you're going to hear Indians screaming at the fucking screen. So get ready. <laughs> now, answer the question. Here we go. The lecture is about the two theories around bipedality. The first theory is about the savanna hypothesis. So basically, this means that ancestors made their homes in trees. But 
about 5 million years ago, the climate began to change and the jungle changed into grasslands. So these ancestors had to cross open spaces, exposing themselves to danger. So not only was standing upright easy to see predators, but it also meant that they would expose less of their body to the savanna sun. However, ancestors already standing upright before leaving the jungle. Some of these uh, scientists actually had stated that. So they believe in the male provisioning hypothesis, which means that if males could carry more food with two arms instead of one, that means more food, therefore more useful. Also, the survival rate and reproduction rate would be very high because evolution was important. Oh my fucking God, Lord, that was tough. That's it. That is your speaking. 